I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Your family had your ex-husband killed to try to help you, didn't they? No, that's completely untrue. So 1201, um, Ms. Magbanawa again reached out for Mr. Garcia. 1207, Mr. Charlie Adelson is uh, contacting Ms. Magbanawa, a little over three and a half minutes. 1230, Ms. Magbanawa calls Mr. Adelson back, 53 seconds. There's an outgoing call at 102. It does not really have a duration, but there is an outgoing call in Mr. Adelson's records to uh, Donna Adelson. And this is at 1 a.m.? That's at 102 a.m. Okay, and then what does he do next? <clears throat> and then at 103, immediately after, there is the outbound call to Ms. Magbanawa for almost 20 minutes. Best Buy was at your house to work on your TV. I have his name and everything at the house if you okay. want it because the boys broke the TV, so he gave me a choice of fixing it or getting a new one. What, what time did he come to the house? He called me at around 8. He was probably there until around 10. Wendy Adelson's forensic extraction or her Cellbrite report, so we're able to see other things that were uh, contained in her phone. And one of the first things we see is that she had a calendar entry. Um, for that day for listed as fixed TV. Um, now we see that it's deleted. Yes. When would that have been deleted? Uh, sometime prior to our analysis of the handset. And your analysis of the handset was done that same day? <coughs> it was done, yes, the afternoon of the 18th. Okay. So this calendar event, fixed TV, was deleted at some point before her phone was taken by law enforcement and, and looked at that afternoon? That's correct. Then we see that there is an outbound call from Wendy Adelson to Donna Adelson. And that's starting at 8.09 in the morning? That's correct. Okay. An immediate return attempt. And then a text message. Again, this is from uh, Wendy Adelson's uh, handset itself, but there is a return text message or a text message from Donna Adelson to Wendy um, communicating about Best Buy and coming by for the repair of the TVs. Okay, she says, Best Buy just called me and I told them to confirm with you. They are on their way over now to help you with the TV set in your living room. Yes. Okay. We have a text to from Wendy Adelson to Charlie Adelson stating this is so sweet. We see that that's deleted. It is, yes. <laughs> that would have also been deleted prior to law enforcement analyzing her cell phone that afternoon the same day as Dan Markell's murder? That's correct. So then he kept them last night, mm -hmm. Thursday night, and then he would have driven them to school. Mm -hmm. What time does he normally drop them off at school? It varies. Sometimes he has breakfast with them. Um, I got the call from him. It was 9.04, I think. Right. So he must have already just dropped them off. Like I think he went straight from dropping off the boys to go to Premier. He called you at 9.02? He called me at 9.02. Mm -hmm. The repair guy was there, and honestly, I leave my ringer off a lot of the time, so I didn't even hear the call come in. Uh, he left me a message. He said, I'm going to do an exercise class that gets out at 10.15 or 10.30, and then we can talk after that. So did he say in that voicemail that he left you what his plans were in regards to the gym that day? He did. What exactly did he say? About the gym? Um, about the gym, he said, I'm going to be at the gym probably between 9.15 and 
but I'm happy to chat or meet with you. Maybe we can go for a walk at school or something like that. Let me know. Okay. We're seeing a blue circle around a dark vehicle. Could you tell us what that indicates? That is Mr. Markell's vehicle. And this is him entering the gym at 9-11? That's correct. He just came into the parking lot and is going around to the front side of the gym. This is Mr. Markell um, immediately preceding the, the video we just saw where he's coming into the screen, coming into the front of the gym. Okay, and is he going to park somewhere? Yes, he parks right behind that American flag. An attempt from Charlie Adelson to call Wendy Adelson? This is the same angle, it's just a little bit further to the left, and that is the front of the gym right there where the green Prius just drove uh, right in front of the front door of the gym. Okay, so they entered through different, entered the parking lot through different entrances? That's correct, they entered over off of the, um, the west side of the parking lot. All right, so we see the Prius here, and we know where Mr. Markell's parked there behind the flagpole. What is that? Correct. He's still in the vehicle, uh, just exited the vehicle there, I believe. All right. So the blue circle indicates that's him getting out of his vehicle? Correct. And where is the Prius at this time? The Prius continued on through the parking lot um, on the north side. And Mr. Markell in the red? Yes, it is. Do we have any reason to believe that any suspects entered the gym? No, we do not. And Mr. Rivera's handset has the events we see here between about 914 and 944, all of them together, that are communicating with two different cell sites and sectors, again, both of which, which would be consistent with a handset being at or near Premier Health and Fitness. some texting contact that's when I was saying that my last contact wasn't very nice I was saying well I wanted to pick them up at 3 and he was saying well you are only allowed them after 4 30 and I was like well what about last week I picked him up at 5 and he said I was just being nice and I said I guess nice it was fun while it lasted okay and that's the last thing I said to him. okay What are we looking at here outside at 9.16 a.m.? 9.16, the green Prius is still driving through the parking lot, but it's coming back from where it had passed through. Coming back toward the gym. This is a uh, on the south side of the parking lot of the gym. And the green Prius just drove through there and is driving around the parking lot still. 
and Mr. Rivera's handset has the events we see here between about 914 and 944, all of them together, that are communicating with two different cell sites and sectors, again, both of which, which would be consistent with a handset being at or near Premier Health and Fitness. And then a return call from Wendy Adelson to Charlie that lasted just over 18 minutes. Did you talk to your brother on the day of your ex-husband's murder? I did. And about what time of day did you speak to him? It would have been right after the repair guys were there because that's when I called him to tell him, ask him whether I should get the TV repaired or buy a new TV. So okay. it would have been morning. How long did you talk to him? I don't remember. Does 18 minutes sound incorrect? I, that sounds reasonable. Okay. Did you talk to him about other things other than just the TV? I really don't remember what else I talked to him about, but probably maybe I would have asked him about his work or we would have caught up. Did you happen to mention Dan Markell's plans to go to New York the next day? I don't see why I would have. What do you recall talking to your sister about? I called her in the car on the way up to work. Um, and I ended up talking to her. She's told me that she was having the TV set repaired. I thought she had told me that Lincoln had thrown something at it and, it bro and broke the screen. Um, so she was getting a TV fix. And then I, I was also, the reason I called her was because I was in a fight with Katie and I wanted to get her opinion on something. So I spoke to her and told her what I said to Katie and she gave me sisterly advice like, like she usually does. Again, the vehicle is turned around, is coming back toward the gym in the same parking lot. Almost managed to get in a wreck there. Just missed. We know from Mr. Garcia's records, we have events at 9.36 a.m. and 9.58 a.m. where his handset is communicating with a cell site and a sector that will be consistent with Premier Health and Fitness. Okay, and what about after that 18 minute call between Charlie Adelson and Wendy Adelson? Well, there's a, this will probably be almost during that, but there's a 9.38 call, um, or just after that, from Charlie Adelson to Donna Adelson, an attempt for 30 seconds. And Mr. Rivera's handset has the events we see here between about 914 and 944, all of them together, that are communicating with two different cell sites and sectors, again, both of which, which would be consistent with a handset being at or near Premier Health and Fitness. And Jake and Dan were talking. Is this Dan, right? I don't really know. Yeah. Dan Markell, I think it's pronounced okay. And my name came up because I'm pretty good friends with Jake and he said, oh, call Stu and talk to him about your concerns or your feeling about the school and what you're, you know, because he works there so he knows the inside. And so um, he asked me if I would contact Dan and I sent Dan a te text this morning. Go ahead, sorry man. Yeah, that's fine. I sent Dan a text this morning and said, hey, I'm available to talk anytime today. And then at 9.57, again, an outbound from Charlie Adelson to Ms. Mike Banawa, 12 seconds. Return call, 9.58, 13 seconds. And again, Mr. Adelson to Ms. Mike Banawa for 6 minutes and 46 seconds. We know from Mr. Garcia's records, we have events at 9.36 a.m. and 9.58 a.m. where his handset is communicating with a cell site and a sector that will be consistent with Premier Health and Fitness. Well, what we see, uh, we see the 958 event, an incoming text. Charlie Adelson again attempts to call Wendy Adelson at 10.06 a.m. 
1007, 1008, there's a couple of contacts between Ms. Bagbanoa and Mr. Adelson, one just over a minute and one about nine seconds. And then 1009, Charlie Adelson called to Ms. Bagbanoa for uh, five minutes and 54 seconds. Okay, what's happening here? Uh, this is Mr. Markell exiting the, the lobby of the gym, coming through the lobby. How long was Professor Markell inside the gym? I believe about an hour and a half. I believe it's about 10.38 when he leaves, somewhere around there. See. We see Mr. Markell uh, walking away from the front doors of the parking into the parking lot toward his vehicle. Okay, so that's this morning. And that's and at 956. Okay. 1036, he said, thanks, what's your name? Because we don't even know each other. I'll try you shortly. Okay, all right. I tell him my name. So we saw Mr. Markell's vehicle leaving. Is that the Prius that was back there in that orange circle? That's correct. They were in the far uh, northwest part of the parking lot parked, and when he exited, they started to exit. And he exited on the uh, Village, Square, Village Square Boulevard exit. never saw anybody exit the Prius during the surveillance video. No, we did they not. They stayed in the car the whole time. That's correct. All right, so where are we right here on the video? This is right in front of the Circle K uh, gas station, which is um, right on Thomasville Road at the Capital Circle flyover. I believe it's McClay Commerce Boulevard is the actual road that they're on. All right, so if we're the bus, we're on McClay Commerce? That's correct, and the, and the Circle K is to the right, and right in front of us is Thomasville Road with the divider where Capital uh, Circle flyover starts. And what does the blue circle indicate? That is uh, the vehicle of Mr. Markell. What time are we seeing him pass that area? That is at 1044. Okay, so is that consistent with going back home from the gym? That's correct. Okay. Okay. Proceed, please. And what does the orange circle indicate? That is the green Prius that was in the parking lot of Premier Gym. What does this show? So this is on Thomasville Road heading south, just south of the I-10. Um, this is the entrance where uh, the, the hospital is to the right. It's a red light. And by hospital you're talking about the 
the new ER. The new ER, exactly, right by I-10 and Thomasville Road. Okay. Were you able to get the tag number from this image from the bus? No, unfortunately we weren't. The resolution on these cameras are set really low because they're saved on DVRs and they, they don't want them to roll over too fast, so they set the resolution extremely low and um, we were not able to pull anything out of that. Where is Professor Markell's vehicle at this point? It is past the red light. It's already made it through the red light. Still heading south on Thomasville Road. Almost 1048. You made contact with him, which sure. would have been just to confirm it was 1048 a.m. is when you finally got the call from him. I'll pull that up. So, Mr. Bell, you're on the phone or until over 11 minutes and 39 seconds with him? Yeah. 1048, he calls me. Okay. I guess that's with the green arrow means. So you talked to him for in the last few minutes we're trying to figure out what was going on with the okay. situation. Okay. I could tell he was driving because there was a lot of just extra noise. It sounded like he was on speakerphone in his car driving. Okay. What does the orange circle indicate here? Where, where are we and what does the circle indicate? We're still southbound on Thomasville Road. Um, this intersection is Benton Road, which is where uh, Winthrop Park is. Um, Benton Road is where the cars are stopped at. In the left-hand turn lane on the far left side of the screen is the green Prius waiting to turn left on the Benton Road. And is that a route to get to Professor Markell's residence on Trescott? That's correct. All right, and that's 10.51 a.m.? Correct. Okay. driving um, and then it's, it sounded like he stopped the, 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 the extra noise wasn't really there and he said I'm hold on a second there's someone in my driveway that's unfamiliar to me and I'm pretty sure that's the words he used and I said sure no problem and he, um, he I guess I don't know what he did I don't know if he opened the door, got out of his car. I tried to just wait till he said, hey, you're back, or I'm back, you know. And um, that never happened. I remember three events ha after that point, because I was trying not to, you know, I was just waiting for him to come back. It was a loud sound, which sounded either like a grunt or something, f it sounded like a person making the sound, but it didn't sound like a good sound. So my mind immediately went to like heart attack. But I think this guy's pretty young. So I stayed on the line instead of calling the, you know, an ambulance right away. And um, so that was one sound. It was a loud grunt, a loud, just a loud sound. And then there was an, a, a lot of sounds that I couldn't make out. Either that the phone had broken, I thought. You know, maybe it fell out of his pocket while he was talking to this person. I don't know. Lots of sounds, couldn't make out the words, but there's definitely voices. Could have been the radio, I don't know. I don't know if he was near his car or he had already walked away from it. And then the third sound was heavy breathing, labored breathing. You know, and I listened and I thought, this could be a heart attack or, I, you know, I don't, I don't have a lot of experience with these things, um, heart attacks or anything, but it didn't sound good. And then I started saying, are you okay? You know, maybe three or four times. 
can I help you, you know, just different things. Um, and then I decided to hang up. We were working with an iPad on a couch and we heard a, a noise, a loud bang. Uh, we weren't sure what it was and I quickly got up to see what might have caused that noise. And um, there had been at the time some burglaries in the area and I was concerned that perhaps uh, that had been a burglary attempt. And so as I approached, we have a large window looking out on the street and as I got to the window, uh, I looked to the left and to the right because I wasn't sure where the noise came from. But on my right, uh, as I looked out, I saw a car uh, quickly back up out of the driveway uh, and then head towards Benton Road very rapidly. What type of vehicle was it? Well, it uh, <clears throat> I caught it out of the corner of my eye, so it was not, I, I didn't uh, look at it real hard, but it looked like a Prius to me, looked like a silver or white uh, colored Prius. Anything about the way it backed out? Did it do that normally or something? So it just went very quickly, and that's what caught my attention. All right. And which way did it go after it backed out of the drive there? As, as it backed out of the driveway, uh, it headed uh, to the right, uh, which was towards Benton Road. What are we looking at on bus 707? So this is northbound on Thomasville Road at Hermitage. Um, this is at 10.55 a.m. And there's two lanes there. They're in the right-hand lane. The bus is in the right-hand lane, but the camera's on the outside of the bus looking backwards. So you'll see oncoming traffic coming behind the bus. And what do we see here? Uh, we see the green Prius pulling up next to the bus. All right, so this is 1055. We last saw him at 1051. Is that narrower murder window down to that four minutes? That's correct. This is north of the where the victim was, and this is coming from the victim's house. <coughs> I think we've prepared. A, tell us what we're supposed to be looking for in this clip. So you can see inside the vehicle, even though it has tinted windows, you can see the drivers uh, wearing dark clothes, but the passenger appears to have a long sleeve white shirt on and he's very animated in the passenger seat. You can also see some distinctive features of the car. Okay, I think we've got this highlighted here in a moment. What are these distinctive features? Will you pause it here, please? So the first one on the lower right-hand corner is a, is what's called a tow hook cover. Um, vehicles in the bumper have, um, a, some vehicles have a little plate in there that you can remove and it has a metal hook inside of it so a tow truck can hook to that, that metal hook and pull the car if it needs to. This uh, particular vehicle is missing its tow hook cover. You can see there's a hole in the front bumper so it's been removed and not been replaced. Also on the front windshield is a, is a sun pass. Um, it was affixed to the windshield. And then on the far left side of the screen is the black um, rear view mirror of the vehicle. Toyota Priuses made in those years had matching uh, mirrors. They, the mirrors were painted with the car, the same color of the car. And you can see in the video that the, the driver's side mirror was still painted, but the passenger side mirror was black, indicating it had been damaged and been replaced by an aftermarket mirror. Okay. And what is a sun pass transponder? Sun, tra sun pass transponders are used uh, primarily in South Florida, especially back then. We didn't really have any sun pass um, toll booths up here, but they're used to pay for um, um, tolls going on toll roads uh, where you don't have to stop and pay cash on the toll booth. You so can pay for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Go ahead. You can pay for it in advance, um, assign it to your car, create an account and uh, fix it to your vehicle so you don't have to stop going through toll booths. When you observed that it appeared there was a sun pass transponder on this vehicle back at this time, 
When did you obtain this video, do you know? Uh, this was back in 2014. Okay. Did it signify to you this vehicle may have come from South Florida? That's correct. What efforts were made to follow up on the sun path? So we ended up uh, working with an investigator with uh, Florida Department of Transportation who maintains Florida Sun Pass, so gave them subpoenas, and um, we ended up thinking the best route for somebody to go through South Florida the Sun Pass would be through Orlando. We obtained, um, we obtained video in Orlando to try to see if that green Prius passed through any of the toll booths there. We also obtained a list of all green Priuses in that year range that uh, had a registered Sun Pass to it. How many of those were there? Thousands. All right, let's let this exhibit finish. For our view here, can you explain what this is? This is the same bus as the light turned green at Hermitage going north on Thomasville, and this is the green Prius passing the bus. try to call him back at a right at 11 right right so grill. right he said there's um, there's an unfamiliar person in my driveway I called back again he went to voicemail so that's 11 o'clock call right right that's 11 o'clock 43 seconds went to voicemail I hung up I maybe after the repair guy left so maybe at like yeah this morning okay. like at 11 um, ish or something okay. um, all right, so you're at your house with the repairman. He leaves. You go back to working on your papers. After he left, I um, I kept working on a paper, and I um, I emailed the paper to a librarian at school to work on some of the citations. Okay. Um, and I don't think I talked to anyone else, but I was just working for an hour or so from the house. I was going to take a shower, but I did it. I ran out of time. And then the are you okay is after the incident. Okay, that's 1101, like you told me earlier, is when you sent it. I'm good. Right. Texted him, thinking, oh, maybe something happened to his speaker because I couldn't. But then the labored breathing was very clear, like the phone was like right here or right here. Um, just very clear, I could, you know. No question about what it was. Texted him, are you okay? No response. So I quickly ran back to the house. It's not very far away as you can see. And got my phone and then called 911. Not responding to me. 
That number, by the way, is 2116-2116. So I went to look up his address because it sounded like he just got home at his driveway. Um, so I went on the Leon County property appraisers, typed in his name, found his address, and called the police. Um, I said, I'm talking, I was talking to a friend of a friend I don't really know well. It seems like something happened. He said that there's an unfamiliar man in his driveway. Did he, do you know, did he recall if he said man? Or no, no, he did say person. He, he said, said person. unfamiliar person. Okay. Uh, you know, my recollection. Yep, that that um, the address is 21 something Trescott. And you did that by looking up on the property appraisers? Right, right, you know, it does a reverse look up. I can look at the address. And I thought that was the best you know, tactic to, to get his address real quick. Um, he was the only damn Markle, too, so it really helped. Um, I, he said on the phone that someone else has already called. And I said, oh, good. I hope everything's OK. Um, he said some sort of accident happened. And uh, he said, but thanks for calling as a second call. We'll make sure someone gets out there or someone's already out there. I mean, I called, but I think we could see what time I called him. I thought it was more of like, let's see, recent calls. I called him, well, that's him calling it at 9.02. I called him at 11.42 and got his answering machine. He left me a message. I called, I called him at 11.42, left a message, and then I called him back. I have the phone record. He called at like 9.00. And he told me I'm gonna. He went to premiere, so he says, "I don't know. You remember how I had a voice thing? Like I hadn't talked to him. He was like, I know your voice is bad. Like, is today work? And we can. He said we could go for a walk at the law school, or we could." Talk. Can you <laughs> let me let me get over this hump, okay? Can we do that first? All right. Can you tell me? What time you left your house this morning? Yeah, it was there. Um, I didn't leave this morning. I didn't leave until noon. Okay. I left my house around 12.15 because I thought I'll get the bourbon and then I'll get some gas for the car and I get super glue for one of the boys' toys. And I was trying to do all I can before meeting my two friends at one. <sighs> We see some events, 1218, 1219, there's two incoming calls from this 305 number, um, very short duration, and we don't see locations for those. So those calls did not reach the handset. Powered off, battery went dead, broken, whatever it may be, but those calls did not reach the handset. Twelve twenty nine and twelve thirty, we see these short codes or these short three digit numbers here, and those are associated with T Mobile voicemail events. Um, and then immediately at twelve thirty, we have the outgoing voice call um, that provides location. So that would indicate that the handset was now back in service with the network. And could that be consistent with him turning off his phone after he left Premiere and then powering it back on after he figured he was far enough away from Tallahassee? It could be consistent with that. Yes. So the next event that we see is at 12.30 p.m. We can see here that it has traveled a reasonable distance from Tallahassee before we see that next event. And is he the orange dot here with 12.30 p.m. next to it? He is, yes. Okay. That looks around about Gainesville-ish area? Uh, north of that, yes. A little north of Gainesville? All right. So that's the first phone call that Garcia made after leaving Premier? Yes, that's the first event with location that we have. 
And then who was his first call mm -hmm. at 1230 when he was north of Gainesville? Who was the first call that either of these Garcia or Rivera makes after the murder? Miss Magbano. Okay, can you show that to us? That was the 1230 call? Yes. We see a very short duration. Is that 20 seconds? It is, yes. Okay. Um, looking at her records, she has a uh, rather lengthy voice call, begins at 1231 p.m. We see that's on a cell site that would be consistent with the general area of her residence. We see at 12.35 p.m., kind of in the middle of the screen here, her handset's now um, kind of halfway between there, and then that call ends at 12.47 p.m., and it ends on a cell site here very close to uh, ABC uh, Liquor Store. So looking at that, <coughs> again, the receipt time, 12.49, the call ending time, 12.47, um, we can kind of approximate that she would have been by the Trescott residence, you know, at, at 10 or so minutes earlier than that. Oh my God. And I tried to drive up Trescott and I saw that it was blocked. Uh, it was blocked at some point. I'm not sure what time it was blocked. And I just thought, oh, there's maybe some trees down or something. Cause somebody oh, you're saying as you drove down which one of the side roads? When I, I'm going to a friend's party tonight and it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, um, Oh my god, what am I even talking about? I needed to buy, it's a stock the stock the shelf engagement party and so I went to buy bourbon. Okay. So I went to drive from my place <laughs> of Trescott to get to ABC Liquor and it was blocked so I just turned around. I was on the phone at the time, I wasn't paying a lot of attention. Right. Um, and I, so I just turned around and drove up the other way. I just thought, oh, sometimes there's, when I lived in there, there were electrical things okay. that would happen. Um, so I went to drive to ABC Liquors, and I went to go through Trescott, and it was blocked off. So I went around. Do you recognize this vehicle? Uh, it looks like a vehicle that I saw approaching the scene <laughs> that day. I'm sorry, will you repeat your answer? It appears to be a vehicle that I saw approaching the scene that day. Did you know at the time that Wendy Adelson drove this type of vehicle? Yes. All right, so you noticed this vehicle or a vehicle identical to this one approach your position? Yes, ma'am. And what did the vehicle do when it approached your position? I uh, just stopped pretty quick and turned around and headed back in the other direction. Did the driver stop and inquire of you what the activity was at the Markel residence? No. Do you know what time of day that was that you observed this vehicle approach the, the roadblock? Uh, sometime a little afternoon. Probably and around closer to one. And just to clarify, were there any <coughs> other roadblocks between where you were positioned and encountered this vehicle and the Centerville intersection? No. Um, I want to talk about where you went when you left your residence on the day of the murder. You tried to turn on to Trescott and then you ended up where? I went, um, I was supposed to go to a party that night, a stock the bar party. So I went to a liquor store to pick up what they had asked for as the present for their party. Um, so I went to the liquor store, I picked up the alcohol, I stopped, I think I got gas, and then I went to lunch to meet my friends. Would you have been able to see the roadblock from the intersection of Centerville and Trescott? No. If you had just started to turn on to Trescott and then rerouted back onto Centerville, would you have been able to see the roadblock that way? No, you'd have to go a considerable amount around. Okay. And from the roadblock where you were positioned, could you see the crime scene? Yes. Now, did Dan Markell have he and Wendy Adelson's children the morning of July 18th? He did, yes. All right. And he had taken them to school that morning, right? Yes. All right. Looking at um, her cell bright, were you able to see her calls that morning after she would have past this Trescott Drive area? Yes. All right. 
After driving by that street, the road being blocked, the crime scene tape, and police cars, did she attempt to contact Dan Markell to make sure he was okay or the kids were okay? Here we've kind of highlighted the calls that were made after that time, starting at 1247, and we can see that there are to a variety of people. Um, none of them were Mr. Markell. Did she attempt to contact uh, creative preschool to make sure the kids made it to school there wasn't type some type of incident at the house she did not did she attempt to call 911 or law enforcement to check and see what was going on since her kids were staying on that street she did not she just continued on to ABC and then up to mosaic correct were there any liquor stores in that area back in July of 2014 there were yes okay which ones so we have the uh, Publix Liquor Store, they're off of Thomasville Road, Market Square Liquors, Market Square Shopping Center, and there is another ABC location a little further north on Thomasville Road. What route could she have taken to one of those three liquor stores? Uh, of many, the one of the routes is the one depicted here by the red dashed lines, um, which would have taken her up Centerville Road and then over to Thomasville and down to Mosaic. What route did she actually take to go to the ABC liquor down on Thomasville and then to Mosaic? We can see here her um, path would have been the purple line and the shortest distance again being the red dotted line. Now I know, I mean obviously that looks like the shortest distance, but how much shorter are we talking about? Oops. So we can only, uh, our mapping, our GIS software is able to provide uh, approximate travel times and distances kind of like Google Maps um, and so what we can see is that the miles for the shortest route would have been 3.63 and they estimate travel time in about 11 minutes the uh, other travel was almost nine and a half miles which they estimate travel at a little over 20 minutes and I was supposed to go to a friend's uh, engagement party tonight and it's called a stack the bar engagement. So I went to go find bourbon and then I looked for bourbon. That's why I was trying to show the officer like I have receipts from all these things, but. And the liquor store purchase appears to have occurred at 1249 based on the receipt. Do you have any reason to dispute that no, timing? No, that sounds right. I was trying to do all I can before meeting my two friends at one. And where was the restaurant located? Um, Mosaic. I actually don't remember. I just remember I would go north on uh, Thomasville Road. All right. And so it was. And is the restaurant where law enforcement came to speak with you, and you ended up going with them to the police station, right? That's correct. What we see here is all the communication between all of these parties starting at that 1230 call from Garcia to McBanwa and then down through midnight that night? Uh, down through 1020 in this particular summary. Yes. Okay, thank you. you ever ask someone to do something like this? Not in a million years. Okay. Do you think someone would do this for your benefit without asking you? No. What good does it deserve? I made my brother, um, the one his name is Charlie, the one I'm really close to, he makes a lot of jokes in bad taste and it was a joke he made. He bought the TV for me this morning that got broken and I was talking to him about whether it made sense to pay to fix it or whether I should get a new one. And it was always his joke that like, he knew Danny treated me badly and it was always his joke. He said, I, I, you know, I looked into hiring a hitman and it was cheaper to get you this TV. So oh. instead I got you this TV. Okay. Um, I mean, he would never, 
he's my big brother and he's been taking care of me since I was little, but he would never. And I, I said, I told that to the repair guy this morning. Right. It's okay. <laughs> I said, he asked me how much it cost and I said I didn't know because it was a gift because my brother said it was cheaper than a hitman. It was my divorce present. Okay. <laughs> Such a horrible thing to say. I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> But even my family, who felt like I had been mistreated, would never do something like this. Never. The brother that you're really close to, the one that joked about the TV and everything, what'd you say his name was? Charlie. Charlie, and he's in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah. Okay. Tell me what kind of car he has. He has, like, five cars. Can't tell me all of them. He drives a... He's, I think one of them is an unmarked police car. Oh, really? He's a bit of a character. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. Alright, let me go get the form for the phone, okay? to the full extent of the law. Regardless of who it is. I mean, it would be different if I thought it were my brother, but I don't think it was my family. Uh, anyone outside my immediate family, that's a tough one. Okay. But I don't think my immediate family did this. So okay. if it's anybody else, yeah. Okay. I mean, obviously, like, I would be one of the people that they would think did it. I mean, you have certainly the most contentious relationship with Danny that anyone has. Yeah. And then we see um, communication from the iCloud through the evening hours of the 18th uh, between Mr. Adelson and Ms. Bagbanoa. Okay. What we see here is all the communication between all of these parties starting at that 1230 call from Garcia to Magbanwa and then down through midnight that night? Uh, down through 1020 in this particular summary. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then we see um, communication from the iCloud through the evening hours of the 18th uh, between Mr. Adelson and Ms. Bagbanoa. Okay. So again, yes, we see their travel back. There's fewer communications, fewer dots on the map um, during fewer their return. Fewer dots than when they, when they drove up? Correct, sorry, yes. Okay. Uh, we see the, the reach the South Florida area in the just after 6 p.m. Uh, on the evening or afternoon of the 18th. What we see here is all the communication between all of these parties starting at that 1230 call from Garcia to Magbanwa and then down through midnight that night? Uh, down through 1020 in this particular summary. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then we see um, communication from the iCloud through the evening hours of the 18th uh, between Mr. Adelson and Ms. Bagbanoa. Okay. And then the first thing that we see or information we have is an ATM transaction um, from Mr. Rivera. Okay. Uh, based on the ATM transaction that was seen in the bank records, what did law enforcement do? So first we look at the location information from the handsets to make sure that it's consistent. <clears throat> we do see around the time of that transaction, we do see both Mr. Rivera and Mr. Garcia's handsets communicating with cell sites around the area of the bank. And then uh, investigators were able to locate the surveillance video from the ATM. We can see uh, Mr. Rivera, we see Mr. Garcia in the passenger seat, and we see the green Prius. Okay. Okay. 
what we see here is all the communication between all of these parties starting at that 12:30 call from Garcia to McBanwa and then down through midnight that night uh, down through 10:20 in this particular summary yes okay thank you so again yes we see their travel back there's fewer communications fewer dots on the map um, during fewer their return dots than when they when they drove up correct sorry yes Okay. Uh, we see the, the reach the South Florida area in the just after 6 p.m. Uh, on the evening or afternoon of the 18th. Events earlier on the lower right hand side, we see cell site events in the 710 to 846, which would be consistent with uh, Ms. Bagbanoa's residence. The next events we see 920, 923, be consistent with her moving away, and ultimately 942. Uh, one of those last events we saw with Mr. Garcia, her handset is now communicating with the cell site in proximity to Mr. Rivera's residence. We know that also on the way is Ms. Mascara's residence, relatively on the way. Okay, so that could be consistent with her dropping her children off at Mascara's and then heading back up towards Rivera's residence? Yes. At 8.23, he says, just finishing, I'm not feeling good. Maybe we can just hang out at my house? That's correct. Okay. Here uh, for Ms. Bagbanoa, her, her 946, 947 events, and looking at the sector that she's using, again, consistent with Mr. Rivera's residence. And if we look at um, all of the cell site usage for Mr. Garcia and Mr. Rivera, they are also consistent with the area of Mr. Rivera's residence. Okay. And who did she speak to on the phone during the 10 o'clock hour? Uh, there's uh, contacts with uh, Mr. Adelson. We see, oops, we see at 1012, there is uh, Mr. Adelson attempts to call Ms. Bagbanoa two seconds, and then at 1020, Ms. Bagbanoa uh, calls Mr. Charlie Adelson uh, for a minute and 56 seconds. Were you able to find any other evidence um, about Catherine Bagbanoa and Charlie Adelson's plans that night? Yes, again, going back to um, her location information here, the 1020, 1022, she is consistent still with the area of Mr. Uh, Rivera's residence for those two events. Well, we see communication with uh, Mr. Adelson and uh, Mr. Garcia, but the uh, communications with Mr. Garcia end here, this 946 is the last event um, where her handset communicates with Mr. Garcia's that evening. Okay, and who also is she talking with that, that evening? In addition to the communication with our um, subjects that we've been looking at, we've added in Ms. Yindra Mascaro, uh, and we see that Ms. Magbanawa is communicating with her through the evening hours um, also on this the 18th of July. Okay. Uh, first event here, 9.19 p.m., we see the cell site is represented by the green dots. Um, at the top of our screen, 9.21, little further south and then 940 and, and 1139 the next events we have with location would be consistent with the area of his residence okay okay here it goes this is this is the worst day of my life Maybe I should text them if I can't. Hi, Mom. How's it going? Mom, I need you to sit down. I am fine. The boys are fine. Um, I need you to sit down. I'm I'm fine, and the boys are f and the boys are fine. Danny has been. You can put me on speaker. Yeah. Um, Danny has been shot. Um, and I don't think he's going to make it. Um, and so, I know. I know. Um, so, I found this out around one or two today and I'm at the police station and I'm trying to help them figure out who may have done this. Um, the boys, the boys are, 
the boys are fine. I had Lynn and Alan pick them up from school, and they're with Lynn and Alan right now. Um, and I'm going to leave here soon and go be with them. Um, but I really need you to come here and be with me. But I want you to either fly. If you, I mean, obviously you can't leave right now, but I need you to get yourself together. If it's too much to drive, I'd really rather that you f flew up. I'm at the police station and I'm going to leave soon and be with the boys before they go to bed. They're with Alan and Lynn and they're totally fine. Um, yeah, the boys are fine, but they don't know anything yet. Um, and um, I, in his house, I know, um, I know. So I, I just need you to calm down before you get in the car, okay? Okay, so, um, and it's, you know, it's evening, so if you want to come here tomorrow, I have a lot of people that'll, you know, be here with me and, you know, we'll have a lot of support. So I want you to take your time and just be safe in getting here, but I'd like you to come when you can, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. I love you. Um, um, I, I have, I think Jane might, I have the car here, but Jane might take me, I'm not going to be alone. So I have, um, I have a lot of support and I'll be fine. Um, but, um, yeah, if you could just come here, that would be great. He's, he's in the ICU in the hospital. Okay, but be careful, okay? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, love you too. Bye. Mom, mom. Oh. <laughs> you did awesome with that call. <laughs> Thank you. You were so stressed out about it and you handled it. Um, I just wanted you, I talked to Alan, mm -hmm. okay? And just because my, my suggestion to him, just because we did. Um, was if he goes to the house. Sorry, my mom might be calling back because she hurt me. <laughs> mom? You did, yeah. I just wanted to ask if you could just tell Charlie for me. I just don't want to be making calls right now, so if you could just tell Charlie for me, that would be great. Okay, and just, like, it's on the news a little bit that there was a shooting on Tresca, and so I'm starting to get a lot of calls, um, and I'm not going to be answering them um, unless they're from you, so I would really try not to tell anybody what's going on just yet, just because, like, he's in the hospital, and Charlie, I talked to Charlie earlier today, obviously before any of this happened, like I talked to him at like 10 this morning and he said that he was coming to visit you guys this weekend and um, he had plans and he, he sounded good. I just, I, um, I don't, I just can't mom. So can you just tell him? Yeah, um, just tell him for me and then I'm sure I'll talk to him soon, but I just, I don't want to be on the phone unless I have to right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Love you too. Bye. My mom handled that pretty well. Could you hear her? Yeah. I think, you know, because you're a mama, but mom's always going that natural instinct to kind of protect and help and... Yeah. I'm waiting to hear from you whenever you can. That's Jean. When she said she's here, if I need company or a ride, do you think she meant here, like, metaphysically? Or here, like, in the lobby? She no, know? I think that I would hope that like, I'm going to be going back to work. Uh, so you can have my computer if you need it, and I'll figure out what to do. Okay. Thank you. Get it back. Okay. This uh, email to Jeff then, on the 14th. What I, I haven't looked at any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I could probably find it for you. Like, yeah. in my, well, I'm just Was there some evidence in the iCloud um, involving messages between Donna Adelson and Charlie Adelson where she says she is at his house on the evening of July 18th during a time when Catherine McVanua 
is still more consistent with Rivera's house? Yes. Okay, can you show us that message? I can. Okay, so Donna Adelson here says, call us ASAP at 7.12 p.m.? Yes. And then at 8.59 p.m., she says, outside your house? Yes. And Charlie Adelson says, 10 minutes at 9.19? Correct. Okay. Ten, about 10 minutes from when he sent that text message, so maybe about 9.30 p.m., is that when he's consistent with being at his house? Yes. And according to this message, his mother is already there? That's correct. 